We say Alhamdulillah because Allah has allowed us to come here on this day of Jumu'ah to worship Him the way that He has commanded us to worship Him. And we recognize that if Allah had willed for us to not be here, there is nothing that we could do to come. And so we recognize that Allah has willed for us to be here. And so there is nothing that we could have done nor all of creation could have done to prevent us from being in this gathering today. And so this is an opportunity for us to recognize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to return to Him, wants us to come back to Him, wants us to worship Him, wants us to obey Him. And so for that we say Alhamdulillah. We know that we're in the beginning of the month of Dhul Hijjah, the month in these first 10 days and throughout this month about which the Prophet ﷺ said are the best days, are the most beloved days and are the most virtuous days to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Days that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has swore by in the Quran wal fajri wa layalin ashr. Days that the people across the globe in the millions go and congregate at the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on a yearly basis solely for the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On this day, 1435 years ago, on the day of Arafah, in the 10th year Hijri, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stood on Mount Arafah and he delivered his farewell khutbah. In this final khutbah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam announced to the people that perhaps this will be the final time that he is able to address them in this manner. This was a time in which hundreds, over a hundred thousand sahaba gathered to listen to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A time in which the Prophet ﷺ had the attention of the entire Muslim Ummah on that day and until the last day. Words that he spoke on that day, the words that he spoke on that day are timeless. And so we revisit the khutbah al-wida' that the Prophet ﷺ said on the blessed day of Arafah 1400 plus years ago. On this day, the Prophet ﷺ not only diagnoses every single difficulty and every single ailment that mankind is going to have until the end of times, but he also presents an antidote to all of those ailments. The Prophet ﷺ begins by asking the Sahaba radiallahu anhum questions that you think that they would already know the answer to. He asks them, where are we standing? To which they respond, Allahu wa Rasuluhu a'la. While they all knew that they were standing on the plain of Arafah. He asks them, what day is it? And they respond with Allahu wa Rasuluhu a'la even though they knew that it was the day of Jum'ah and the day of Arafah. He asks them these questions and they respond that saying that Allah and His Messenger know best because by this point in their journey they have learnt that whatever they think that they know, they consign their knowledge to Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They say that whatever you tell us, Ya Rasulullah, that is the truth regardless of what we think. And so even though the Prophet ﷺ confirms that they are on the plain of Arafah, and he confirms that it's the day of Jum'ah, and he confirms that it's the day of Arafah, it is not because those it was that day and on that plain. But reality was set on that time by the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It was true because he said it was true. وَقُلْ جَاءَ الْحَقُّ وَزَهَقَ الْبَاطِلِ إِنَّ الْبَاطِلَ كَانَ زَهُقَ That whatever the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says to be true, it is true because he said so. Not because of anything else. And so that's why they learned Allahu wa Rasuluhu A'lam. It was that day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed الْيَوْمَ أَكْمَلْتُ لَكُمْ دِينَكُمْ وَأَتْمَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَتِي وَرَضِيتُ لَكُمُ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينًا 
It was that day that the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that the religion has become perfected. That the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have been completed. And that He is pleased with Islam as a religion. So what we take from that day is Islam, is the blessing, is the fulfillment of the religion. These words that the Prophet ﷺ speaks then are words that we must take very carefully. The Prophet ﷺ, his khutbah can be summarized in two points. Each point is of course deserving of detail, but we'll summarize it for the sake of time. The two points that we can take away from the khutbah of the Prophet ﷺ is the protection and protection of the honor and the rights of people, number one. And number two, the protection of the property and wealth of people. That if we can honor and protect people, and if we can honor and protect their property, then nothing will go wrong. And as we look at history from that moment until the moment that we see today, these are the two things that we constantly face that are being violated by oppressors over and over and over again. And so now when we see the oppression of people, the oppression of Muslims taking place where their rights as human beings are violated and their property and their wealth is being violated, it should come as no surprise to us because the Prophet ﷺ told us, this is what evil people do. This is what people do who go against my sunnah. And so it is our duty to return to these teachings and protect and honor the rights of people and protect and honor the wealth and property of people. The Prophet ﷺ says, أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ إِنَّ دِمَاءَكُمْ وَأَمْوَالَكُمْ حَرَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ That the blood and the honor of each other and the wealth of each other for you is inviolable. It's sacred. Do not oppress it. Do not transgress it. And then he gives examples, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What are the examples that he gives? He says, the examples of what? Racism. That a black will pref is not preferred over a white, nor is a white preferred over a black. He gives the example of nationalism, that an Arab is not preferred over a non-Arab, nor an Arab over an Arab. The only way to measure criteria is by taqwa. And so he addresses two ways in which oppression is going to take place from that point until the end of times. Through nationalism and through racism. And this is exactly what we see today. He says what, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that there will be oppression that's going to happen between men and women over one another. And so honor your men and honor your women. Because they're going to use the power that they have in society to oppress and silence the other gender. And so what do we see happening in our communities today? Domestic violence in our communities today. Oppression between spouses in our communities today. Divorce within our communities today. How many things because of the oppression that takes place between a husband and a wife? He knew this sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he warned us against it. And number three, he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that shaitan is completely in despair today because he knows that he cannot push you towards kufr and towards shirk. And so what will he do? He will make you fight over the small matters in the religion. He will make you fight over where you place your hands or what direction you face or when you celebrate Eid or when you do X, Y, and Z. Things that are so small and so minor but we make them so big. So that we can say that such and such Muslim is a munafiq or a kafir or a hypocrite or X, Y, and Z. Whereas it was the philosophy of the Prophet ﷺ to accept everyone and to use the religion to build people, not to use knowledge in the religion to take people down. Then, the second point, to protect the property and wealth of individuals. What is the way that the Prophet ﷺ reminds us about in this khutbah? 
He says, the number one thing that's going to be used to corrupt people's wealth is interest. How many times Allah speaks about interest in the Quran? He says, riba." Get rid of what you have of riba in kuntum mu'mineen if you are believers. فَإِن لَمْ تَفْعَلُوا And if you do not do so, فَأْذَنُوا بِحَرْبٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ Prepare yourself to go to war with Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. By engaging in riba, we are putting ourselves in front of Allah and His Messenger with whatever weapon we choose. Pick whichever weapon you choose, you're going to fail. And so if you look at the history of interest, even though interest, riba, was prohibited by the Jews and the Christians and the world powers in the early days, slowly what happened because of self-interest, because of self-interest of religious governing parties, interest became permissible. Interest became something that society allowed. And then what happened? It began to be fueled by projects such as colonialism, imperialism, by projects such as Western European slavery and Western colonial oppression. Interest is what fueled these things to happen. Interest is the reason why these things happened. Money is what made the world spin. And so if we remove interest at its root, you remove oppression that takes place in society. And you can read more about this in various places. One of the books that you can look into is by Yusuf Jah, A Way of Return. And number two, by controlling the property of people, this extends to the control that we have given up when it comes to the control over our time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna iddata shuhuri inda Allah hithna ashara shahran, minha arba'atun hurum. Time is set by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And yet we see throughout history that people continue to manipulate time itself. They move days back and forth. <coughs> they move days back and forth to serve again their self interest. Now we see. Time is manipulated how? By grabbing your attention through television, movies, social media, ads. People are fighting over your time. The capitalist society that we live in views you not as a human being. It views you as a product. And they fight over how you spend <clears throat> every second of your time. And so it is for us to be aware that every second that we spend is either in favor of these oppressors or it's in favor of Allah Azza wa Jal. So how are we spending our time? The solution that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gives is his sunnah. Simple. It is the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam teaches us a simple principle which is to be the child of time Ibn al-Waqt to know what is your right in every moment and to fulfill that right of that moment that is what the Sunnah teaches us and so we walk away with a few practical steps so that we can benefit and learn from the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Number one, the day that's coming up on Sunday, the day of Arafah, see whether you are a slave or see whether you are free with Allah. By devoting your time on that day for worship and not devoting your time on that day in entertainment and in wasting time, one day. See if you can do it for one day. If not one day, then do one night. The night before Eid. See if you can spend one night away from entertainment and in the obedience of Allah. Number two, set a goal for each week. That one day in the week, I'm going to dedicate 
to standing up in the middle of the night to pray tahajjud one night a week and see whether or not we can do it a goal for each month I'm gonna pick one day in the month and I'm going to fast just one day in the month and see if I can do it starting from Dhul Hijjah until the Dhul Hijjah of next year and then one task for the year is whether or not I can spend time this year reading one book or listening to one series on the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for tawfiq, we ask Him for success, we ask Him for obedience and to free ourselves from the chains of slavery that exist today, the chains that are crippling our hearts and our minds and our souls so that we can be free with Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa'il al-Muslimin fa astaghfiruh innahu huwa al-Ghafurur Rahim.